Okay, buoyant forces. Uh, let's imagine here that we've got a, we're gonna build a canoe. All right, so somebody gives us a two cubic meter block of aluminum, that's pretty big. Remember one uh, meter, cubic meter is about uh, one meter by one meter by one meter deep, so a pretty sizable chunk. And we're gonna use that to build a pretty big canoe. Uh, and we wanna figure out uh, how big it's gonna be and, and how much it's gonna weigh and how many people we can actually fit in this canoe um, once it's built. All right, so first step we would have to do is say, well, how much would the canoe weigh if we used all two cubic meters in order to build it? And the weight of the canoe would be the weight density of aluminum, which is 27,000 newtons for every cubic meter of aluminum. Each box that's that size weighs 27,000 newtons. And we have two cubic meters of that. So the overall weight of this thing would be 54,000 newtons, all right? That's the weight of this thing. Now, <clears throat> what does that mean? Well, that means that the buoyant force, once this thing is constructed and put into the water, will have to be equal to or greater than 54,000 newtons if this thing is to float. Because right now, if you put a chunk of aluminum in the water like that, it's gonna drop right down to the bottom. But we can manipulate the shape of it so that it displaces more water, in this case, fresh water, and uh, we can figure out how much, um, how much uh, water it will displace and what the buoyant force will have to be. And the buoyant force will have to be 54,000 newtons in order for this thing to float or greater. Okay, let's say that the, uh, the buoyant force, we wanna, we wanna calculate how much um, display, or what will it be the volume of water that will have to be displaced by this canoe in order to make it float. So the buoyant force is the weight density of the fluid it's in uh, times the volume of fluid displaced. Okay, pushed aside. All right, and if the amount of buoyant force needs to be 54,000, and if we're in fresh water, that means that it's 10,000 newtons is what, how much one cubic meter weighs, then we're gonna solve for uh, times, uh, we're gonna solve for the volume. Okay, how much water will be pushed aside? Um, this is fresh water, which has a weight density of 10,000 newtons per cubic meter. All right, so divide both sides by, um, by 10,000, and we end up with a volume of water displaced that is gonna be 5.4 cubic meters. All right, so that's how much water must be displaced by this canoe in order to make it float. All right, so we've gotta manipulate the shape so that it's got air inside and it's gonna push aside water, okay? Well, let's say now that uh, this boat um, actually displaces six cubic meters of water. Um, so we'll say if it displaces six cubic meters, then how much cargo could the canoe carry? All right, how much cargo could this canoe carry if it displaces six cubic meters? Well, we're still displacing fresh water, so the weight density is not going to change. The only thing that changes is the volume. So now we're going to have a new buoyant force, and the buoyant force, the difference between the buoyant force and the weight of the boat before any cargo is added, will be the amount of weight that can be devoted to carrying cargo or people or whatever, uh, because a canoe all by itself would just drift downstream and end up sunk somewhere, and we don't want that. So uh, FB, now the buoyant force is gonna equal six cubic meters times 10,000. So 10,000 times six is 60,000 uh, newtons, right? 10,000 times the new volume, which is 60,000. So that's the new buoyant force. And if we say 60,000 minus 54,000, well, that means that the amount of cargo that can be held is, um, what is that, uh, 6,000 newtons, all right? So if that's uh, a bunch of backpacks, that's probably, uh, if you have, you know, 1,000 newton men, which are big boys, that would be close to, uh, that would be six guys, six big boys fitting in that. Uh, if we have a displacement of that much, six meters, okay? Buoyant forces.